Today on Vista LA, the power of the individual. Se ve, se siente, la mujer está presente. Every morning that I wake up, is, it's a challenge to do the things better than I did yesterday. Roman LA streets, seeking American glory. Plus, a photo collection reflects Latino culture and history. These stories and much more on Vista LA. Welcome to Vista LA, I'm Giovanna Lada. We join you today from SPARC, the Social and Public Art Resource Center in Venice. And this artwork you see here represents the diverse Los Angeles community and touches on issues of peace, culture, and struggle. Which brings us to today's show, which is about individuals with powerful visions. And we begin with a photojournalist whose collection is priceless. The eyes of photojournalist George Rodriguez have witnessed history. It was a turning point in the movement in that it made uh, young people, especially Chicanos, aware something was going on. And his lens captured those key moments. You rarely meet somebody this special. Sometimes you know that there's something happening around someone and that that is a special person and that's the impression I got. Cesar Chavez. Human rights activist Cesar Chavez was a leader for the Chicano movement during the 1960s and early 70s. George's photography depicts the struggle many Latinos faced fighting for civil rights. The Chicano movement was, was pretty new and there was no formula as to what to do. Then came the National Chicano Moratorium March on August 29, 1970. George took pictures. Today, these photos tell a story of how far Latinos have come in L.A. The moratorium, the walkouts at, at the high schools. Can you imagine high school kids walking out of school because they want a better education? You're making a point, but it's kind of unrealistic. I mean, to do that, and then again, they suffered consequences. There's an old Buffalo Springfield song. There's a line in there that says, uh, what a field day for the heat. That's what it was like. They were just high school kids, and to, to constantly react and beat them up, it ended badly. It ended in a riot. The day itself, man, it was special. I, nothing had ever happened like that before that march. With the Chicano movement, if I hadn't been there taking pictures, I'd be there anyway. You know, it's just a part of uh, how we were brought up. George grew up in South Central Los Angeles. I was lucky in that I went to a vocational high school, uh, Fremont High School. I would say they're the best photo school in the world by the people they turned out. To me, my idols were Life Magazine photographers. And at one time, a quarter of them went to Fremont. My dad suggested a commercial course, and uh, luckily I, I took photography because uh, I needed an elective, and I've loved it ever since. Today, his photographs reflect 40 years of experience, history, and culture. I've paid my dues. I've been around for a while. The first half of my working life, I work in photo labs. You do a lot of things you don't want to do. For anybody starting out in photography, I would say the first half of your career, you're just learning and, and you're intimidated by everything. You reach a point where you're not intimidated anymore. In fact, you go the other way. You don't want to hear anything because you know your job. George has strong opinions about ethnic labels. I'm a yeah. photographer, you know, before anything else. I, I know who I am. People don't have to tell me I'm, I'm Mexican. I know I'm, I am Mexican, I'm Chicano. People want to put you in a bag sometimes. Don't approach anything as being a minority or Latino. Just, you know, do it through the mainstream. Somehow I realized that, you know, I should start shooting people in the neighborhoods because uh, just to let people know who we are. We're just like everybody else. I always have my camera with me and I always go through neighborhoods. Not that you're consciously looking for anything, but you don't know what you're going to come up on. He just wanted to be prepared. He's shot it all from the barrio to Hollywood. Michael was, you know, extremely shy. I mean, not as a little kid, but as an older kid, uh, as a teenager, very, very shy. When I did the photos for that at first album, Michael must be around 11. Motown was still in Detroit. So I was shooting things for, for Motown. Uh, I remember I shot a concert. It was the Supremes and the Jackson 5. And then everybody said the Jackson Who, you know, because they hadn't even released an album yet. 
His private collection includes candid photos of Marilyn Monroe which have never been published and memorable sports moments such as Oscar de la Hoya boxing his way to the top. That's a tribute to his mother because he, he does that after every fight. A few words of wisdom for aspiring photographers. And you can get your foot in the door but you better know what you're doing otherwise uh, you're not going to you know, do it very long. Coming up, meet a remarkable mother, plus a Latina whose organization is changing the lives of thousands.